Well, hello there. This is Retro Spirits Gaiden, and this is Last Blade on the Neo Geo AES. This is the Neo Geo logo, and we're playing with 330 Mega Pro Gear spec here by Snook. And this is the customary warning from the game to my eyes. We have an intro here, and the future is now according to SNK. We have glowy balls that are flying up the screen and some Japanese voiceover. All quality stuff, which you would expect from uh, SNK's cartridge machine uh, behemoth. Uh, we've got a dragon, a tiger, phoenix, and a different type of dragon. And they've turned into balls. They're literally like animal balls moving in 3D space using sprite scaling, which is a feature of the old Neo Geo, isn't it? This game is a 1v1 fighting game in which you can control some sort of samurai in a showdown. It's a samurai style showdown, uh, not in the samurai showdown canon. We have a guy who's moody in front of the moon, an eagle, lightning, a dude who's also a different dude, a castle, here he goes, he's going to change into a different dude. Yellow haired dude from black haired dude. And other people who are all actually nicely animated and playable characters in this game. So the last blade is literally Samurai Showdown, but uh, it's got a bit of a different combo system and a deflect move. It's a weapons based fighter. It uses the zoom features of the Neo Geo. Uh, you've got very familiar characters here. Uh, you will find the majority of these are mirrored in the Samurai Showdown games. You've got Elvis in a pink bathrobe versus a psychopath with a sword that splits into two. We have a Japanese style intro to each round, which is lovely. And this is the game itself. So it's a high speed fighting game with high amounts of damage. You get two energy bars essentially. In this game, you get a yellow energy bar and an orange one. And when the orange one wins eight, you lose the round. The guy in the bathrobe hits you with a stick rather than a bladed weapon, which seems like a bit of a disadvantage in this game, to be fair. You can see from the scaling that the actual way it scales is quite a lot nicer than in other Neo Geo games. It doesn't go so nasty pixely and it doesn't zoom in quite as fast as other games which makes it a bit more of a easy effect on the eye which is appreciated. The backgrounds are nicely detailed, there's not a huge amount in the way of parallax scrolling in them. The characters themselves are nicely designed and animated. Like I said we've got a parry move here which I don't think I'm going to use that much in this particular video having not played the game for a while. But when I first bought this game, I played the hell out of it. It's a wonderful fighting game. And uh, the final boss is um, usual. It's the usual SNK final boss. He's slightly cheap. He, I mean, he is beatable, but he's slightly cheap. He's got like a, a move which will take a whole energy bar off you, essentially. Fairly annoying. The guy here that I'm using who I don't know his name. I mean, it just sounded like he said Sikyo. Um, he's a bit like... Uh, here's Sikyo. There we go. This is Keed. Uh, he's like... Uh, Genan from uh, Samurai Showdown. And all these, you know, I'm fighting basically Haro Maru from Samurai Showdown here. Which is, you know, it's, it doesn't, they don't go too far from the archetypes. So it's very familiar in that sense. We do have some nicely uh, drawn backgrounds here as well, with a little bit of parallax. Nice autumnal colours, lovely. You have, uh, you can choose uh, at the beginning of the match whether your character is more power or speed focused, I believe. Maybe I'm remembering that from the sequel. But essentially, you have a fast slash move, a heavier slash move, a kick move, and a deflect move. And depending on your character, but there we go, I just deflected there, you'll get access to different moves on that deflect. 
depending on the speed of your character, maybe. It's quite actually, it's, although it's fairly easy to deflect moves, I find it fairly difficult to follow up on them. Because uh, I'm a fighting game lover, not necessarily expert. So it would take me, uh, take me some time to work out the best use of those deflect moves. But they are in here, and they are useful. The soundtrack of this game is more ambient noise. I mean, there's a few tunes. They're not brilliantly reproduced. They're not exciting tunes. But the overall atmosphere setting SFX and samples are quite nice. There's a lovely one where you're in like a backyard, a back back alley kind of scene in a Japanese town and there's like a dog barking and it's, it's lovely. I do like that one. Nice ambient SFX. Some of the backgrounds animate here. You can knock snow off the trees if you do a particularly good hit, which is groovy. Oh, you got a taunt button as well. I think you press two buttons together to do the taunt, from what I remember. Shikyo there had uh, some sort of move where he could interrupt an opponent's move and uh, potentially cause them more damage. You've got a power bar at the bottom of the screen. That's also speed or power um, defined and you can... I think it, it kind of controls what button inputs you need to, to put into to actually pull the move off. I think the moves are similar. I'm finding it difficult to remember if the moves are similar or not on that. I'm pretty sure they are. Uh, basically, uh, you know, same as super moves in other games causes extra damage. So it's all fairly standard stuff. But what we do have is we have SNK's lovely production values. We have a lovely front cover on the box for the collectors. When I bought this game, it was 90 English pounds in the, I guess it was the 20, early 2010s. And I think it, I got a fairly good game for 90 English pounds. You can get this game on other formats these days, including Dreamcast, PS2, I believe, that sort of business, and it's usually not on things like the Neo Geo Mini. I'm not sure it's on the European version of that. One of them has both Last Blade games, but I think the one I've got has only got Last Blade 2. And um, that's got more characters in it, and a slightly weaker backgrounds in my opinion. But anyway, the original Last Blade, the one we're looking at right here, is great. And if you can get it for 90 quid, I'd suggest buying it. But that's going to be impossible, because this game has increased in price from 90 quid to about six to seven hundred pounds. Is it worth that much money? Well, no it isn't, is it? Because no game is. So there we go. A great game, a good fun game, lovely animation, lovely atmosphere, satisfying moves, great cast of characters, a bit like Samurai Showdown but faster, and 700 quid. So yeah, never mind. And the, I don't even know if this came out on the Neo Geo CD, to be fair. Um, they had problems with some of these games on the CD version of the old console because um, they had to reduce sprites in some games, didn't they, etc. Some of the fighting games. Um, I'm not sure it came out on the CD. But anyway, you can get Last Blade 2 for definite on the Dreamcast because I own it. Uh, I don't think this one, this one maybe wasn't converted. But I'm sure you can get a collection on other consoles which include the first and second game. Yeah, brilliant game. Too expensive on AES format. Uh, check it out on one of the other consoles. Hopefully they've got pixel perfect graphics rather than blurry fillers. Who can say? Don't own them, so I don't know. The Dreamcast version of Last Blade 2 actually doesn't look as clean as this and it's got some weird uh, patination in the graphics as well. So that's unfortunate. This background is probably one of the weaker ones. I don't like this background so much. It's a bit, uh, a bit brown. And in the second game, they do have an awesome background where a building is on fire and you're fighting inside the building. That is a cool background. 
this one does have at least a little bit of parallax in it in the foreground. But yeah, it's mainly 17 shades of brown, isn't it? Not that exciting. All right then. Great game. Too expensive on uh, AES format. Get it somewhere else. Ta-ra!